Hello and welcome to my first episode on my new series, Cravones Tanks. This episode is going to be on the E100 and has been done in 9.6. The E100 is a heavily armoured, slow, high alpha, frontline pushing tank whose main job is to be a damage soak as well as dealing out decent amount of damage, it, damage per shot. As such it can be used defensively or offensively. Um, and ideally around uh, three to four of them I mean some teams may even go overboard with going with much more than three or four it is the tier 10 German heavy tank alongside the mouse and it branches from the Tiger, the Tiger 2 and the 75 now unlike most other tier 10s this tank actually has two viable guns that you could use on it one is the mouse gun, which is the 128, and the other one's the 150, uh, which is the 100 specific gun. Um, most people will be using the 150, um, but the mouse gun has higher penetration, so it might be better to use if you're, you're if you're on a cheap setup in clam or not in clam wars, a cheap setup in randoms. Uh, but for clam wars, you're probably going to be wanting to use that derp cannon. Um, now, the derp cannon can be quite difficult to use um, based on the uh, the low penetration, relatively low accuracy, and the fact that it's a how it's just the shell travel time is an issue. Um, I would suggest if you're using standard AP, anything you can pen with the Tiger II, you can pen with AP using the E100. For additional equipment, I would suggest for your first two slots, you want ventilation and you want a uh, large calibre gun rammer, because the rate of fire is really slow on the E100. Um, for your final item, I would suggest, this is completely preference, um, either the enhanced gun laying drive, because it's got quite a long aim time, uh, toolbox, which means you can get your tracks up much quicker, which you do get track quite a lot in E100 or a large uh, spool liner, be well super heavy spool liner um, because that can actually be useful sometimes now the two guns have different shell types the smaller gun, the 128, has AP, APCR and HE shells whereas the big gun has AP, heat and HE shells um, now I don't know how many shells the mouse gun carries in the 100 but the uh, 150 mil gun carries 50 shells so I generally take 20 AP, 20 heat and then 10 HE. Due to the extremely long reload however it's, it's quite hard to get the right shell for the right time in the battle but you've got a lot of shells so you can have a mixture but Generally, you want to be imagining what you're going to be shooting at in 20 seconds time with the derp cannon. That's how difficult it is to guess what target you're going to be firing at. AP is probably best on mediums and the side of tanks, whereas heat is best for the front of um, enemy heavies. Uh, even though the I-7 has pike nose, you want to be shooting heat at it, because the AP shell just does not have enough pen for it. Uh, HE can be used on Waffen Traegers for 1000 damage, 50 Bs, uh, Bat Chats, and uh, anything like paper like that. Also for decaps. For consumables, uh, for a cheap game I take the um, small repair kit, small hilk and small extinguisher. Uh, for things that are important like clown wars, I often take either a choice of a large repair kit, I actually take the large repair kit. You could take a large hill kit, but then you uh, you get chocolate and the automatic fire extinguisher. Now the E100 comes with a commander, a gunner, a driver, a radio man and two loaders, so six crew members. Um, it's important to remember if one loader gets taken out it does affect the reload. If both loaders take get taken out you're looking at a minute reload um, 
so as for skills, um, now ignore what I've got on my crew. Um, that's probably not the best way to do it. Um, I would recommend uh, for your first skill on all crew members have brothers in arms. <laughs> then for your commander, you want six cents. For your gunner, you want either dead or a snapshot. For your driver, you want preventive maintenance um, because your engine can be knocked out and set on fire quite easily um, because you're in a German tank. Radio man, situational awareness, no brainer on that one. And then your two loaders. So if you're someone that likes using intuition perk, get intuition on both of them. If not, get adrenaline rush and safe storage. Um, then for the final skill I re recommend, because you need your tracks back up, stick repair on all of them. The only thing is the driver, if you wanted to ram more, then by all means use controlled impact as long as you've got a uh, spool liner. Now to keep your tank alive, you need to know the weak spots. Weak spots are key. Um, so for the E100, in this picture is sort of how you want to have your enemy seeing your E100. Um, or I mean, if you can get that lower plate blocked, that's even better because then the enemy team, like the enemy won't see your weak spots. Now the turret can be easily penned with gold shells and through the top bar. So what you want to do, you're going to want to angle your turret 45 degrees whilst reloading. Um, it's important to do this because then everything will bounce. AP, APCR, um, heat, Hesh will even do no damage. Uh, the only thing that will damage you is Arty. Um, but if you keep it dead on the enemy, everything's probably going to be firing heat at you and pen that. Now, frontally, the weak spots of the E100 are as obvious with any German tank. The lower plate in between the tracks, that is a huge weak spot. Everyone's going to be shooting you there. Uh, the tracks, they want to avoid shooting your tracks. Um, now, there's a little bit of a gap between your turret and your tank. Um, that is a that is a good spot to shoot at if you're facing an E100 as well. Um, unfortunately, you can't hide that as an E100 driver. Um, then the uh, the cheeks, which are coloured in orange, can be penned with heat shells or high pen AP or APCR. So be careful of that. That's where you keep your turret angled slightly. Now, a side on E100 can be harder to pen than people think. Uh, because the low, like, the tracks are spaced armor, the side is spaced armor, um, but you can hit between the turret and the hull. If you hit the side of the turret as well, you're easily going to pen that, um, provided it's not an angle. Also, if you're lucky enough to go through that spaced armor, you can set an E100 on fire by shooting the back part of the tank. Also, the, the front and back drive wheels can be penned for some damage sometimes, but that's not a guarantee. Now, lastly, the back of the 100. In purple, we can see the, the small little disc on the back. That's an Amorak spot. You will always pen that spot. It's an Amorak spot. You could blow the tank up. Anywhere on the back turret, aside from that, is a pen spot. Again, the gap between the turret and the hole. Um, now, from the back, on the hull, you want to hit below the exhausts. Anything above where the exhausts come back, come up, can bounce because it's extremely well angled. Also, the tracks are spaced, so you're not going to do damage hitting the tracks. Right, so let's take the 100 into battle and see what we can do. Um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna show footage here now. I'm, I'm actually live commentating this. Uh, so yeah, um, we're gonna see what we can do in the 100. Um, hopefully, I can show off some of the angling techniques to keep the tank alive, and some of the advantages, disadvantages of that gun. Um, I'm using the 15cm gun, 
Ooh, I think I'm going to be going uh, to the one line. Uh, I don't fancy taking my chances somewhere where Artie can hit me on the uh, nine zero line. Um, I would rather be somewhere where I can effectively use my armour. Um, but I want to be careful on the uh, one line uh, because if I if I go too far or if I angle wrongly, they can actually get a better angle on my lower plate. I don't really want to give a better angle to that FV405 they've got on their team. Just turn sound off. Uh, the, not sound. Um, chat. Battle chat. Yes, that's it. Also, I'm, I'm changing my options in, like, in the game for some reason. As you can see, it's quite a slow vehicle. Um, it was doing quite well on roads. I've just taken it off road um, into open ground and it's grinding slowly to a halt. I'm going to be firing my first shell being AP um, and then I'll see what pops up and use heat if necessary. Or even HE if I see that FE. So this is a medium. This is what I want to be using AP on. First shot straight into the lower plate. I use my tracks effectively because the tracks is going to be what absorbs shells. Poking out a bit too much here, but I sort of want to show what you can do with angles. Again, AP shell got a good angle on the M103's track, got the track shot. I'm staying behind here because I don't want to be arted. Now this thing comes up. This is going to be hard to angle against. It goes to the medium instead. Um, again, I'm trying to angle on the 3090. But I'm preloading heat for my next shell on this E100. So you want to be trying to hit the upper bar. I didn't get it, so he's going to save me. He's probably going to... Yep, he went for my lower plate even though I angled. But that's because he's lower and I'm higher. We're actually going to back up. Don't want him to keep that advantage. I'm going to let him come up to me. Side scraping is really good because your tracks are spaced armor and people don't like spaced armor. So he shall try to go for the turret. Missed. What's he going to do? Is he going to try? Is he going to try my turret? Oh! He took out my engine. I'm actually curious where he hit. Yeah, he actually managed to pen my lower plate with that uh, shell. So I'm repairing my engine because it's a slow tank. I'll be showing a second game after this. Because I've not really shown much blocking. So I'm probably going to be like hit by RT at some point. Right, he bounced on my... Uh, well, he didn't bounce, he hit my spaced armour um, on the track coverings. So that was a heat shell through the, uh, through the turret. Um, quite bad um, aiming. Now, I angled my turret perfectly there and as a result he bounced after angle against his tortoise. I didn't aim that one in anywhere near as much as I should have. Oh, I, right, okay, that's good, because I thought he was going to drown. I didn't want to angle that like that. So I'm tracked here. This is why you have repair, because you want your tracks to be up as quick as possible. I try to fire a heat shell at the tortoise in vain. I didn't aim for the weak spot. Actually, I think that was standard AP. So yeah, we were quite lucky Artie didn't decide to go for us in that game. Um, not a fantastic game, but 
we contributed to this 14-1 victory uh, by soaking up quite a bit of damage and doing 2.1k. Not as much as we took, well, a little bit more than we took, but still. Let's go into another game. Um, hopefully you're seeing how I'm angling and how I got, well, I got steel wall in that. I don't even know how. Um, I'm pretty sure I didn't take that much. Oh, I blocked 3.59, 3.6k damage there. Um, it's, it's an expensive tank to run because obviously sometimes you use heat. Um, yeah, that was their best player. Um, that was showing me. Now, um, let's go into uh, another game. Hopefully you can see how I'm angling the tank, and particularly the turret. Um, the whole, like, even, oh, I don't like this map. Even with the best angling on the whole, um, they can still hit your lower play, and if they're good enough at hitting angles, um, they'll still pen. So that's, that's quite difficult, because the point at which you angle your hole to, to where they're auto gonna they're gonna auto bounce your lower plate is also the point where they're gonna start penning the side um, so hiding that lower plate is much better um, also the turret like always always angle the turret when you're mid reload now I don't like this map um, because I don't feel I can really do that much quite often on it. Um, now my... If I were in any other tank, um, I would probably want to be going up the hill. However, since I'm in a slow tank with a derp cannon, with like a bunch of front armour, I'm going to be going up the 1-2 line. But... Now, I, I need the centre to be clear, so I need my team to do some work in the middle first. Because once the middle's safe, I can actually push forward. Um, because then I won't be worried about getting side shots. Also, we've got the, uh, the magical heat shells, which, at long range like this, will um, increase pen over distance. Well, it won't decrease pen over distance, basically. So... We're looking at this team. There's a PTA on the 1 2 line. T44, the T44 spying. The PTA, I sort of I sort of don't want the PTA up here. I want him in the middle or on the hill. Um, but we can win this game by them being on the. by us winning this line. So, we're going to see. Right, straight away. We've noticed the target there. We are spotted. There is Arty, so we need to jostle back and forward. We don't. We only want to push forward when nothing's spotted, because if something's spotted, um, we can let our team do damage on it. Right. Have no line on him, so we're going to push forward slightly. So we're hit by that VK. Um, we're tracked. I'm not going to repair just yet. And um, we are still spotted. Going to stop to fire. Missed. So we got the 57 showing us. Again, we're not going to repair because we've just seen Arty fire. And we're, we're banging them into shooting at the moment. I should probably pull back because we can't see that 57. So I'm going to pull back. Power engine. <laughs> so that was quite a bad move on my part, but it's uh, we need the center secure. It's probably enough to get us steel wall. Um, problem with brothers and arms is not problems. Problem with six senses is that you can't tell when you're not spotted. So um, we're going to back up a little bit. 
we want our team to resecure the middle. Uh, that was a HE shell. So, what we're going to do here, we're actually going to relocate from here once we're unspotted. Because it, there's no point staying in a fight where you're spotted and the enemy aren't. And we could push forward to spot, but I'm not sure we have enough firepower here to destroy anything that does get spotted. I also believe they've got a scout around here, which is what's spoiling us. Because otherwise I would be spotting that IS-7. Oh, and they do have a scout there, actually. It's probably a bad spot to be, but nah. we tried to pop that uh, that scout. Um, what we're going to do is something quite dangerous. But we're going to be going over the rail track. Um, I'm assuming we're going to take a shell from that E100 that's in the middle. So that's, that's my main concern. <laughs> but if we can, if we can, like devastate the tanks they've got on the hill, like we can see one already. Um, then maybe we can actually counter push problem is we've got no center map control which is going to screw us over keeping keeping an eye on the A100 where you can shoot oh and no 7 we're going to stop only to shoot and then we're going to keep going we're taking shots here that probably won't hit, but there's a chance they will, and there's at this point there's no cost in taking those shots. Now this is this is quite a dangerous thing to do, so this might be a very bad play. I'm gonna preload heat. we could we're, we're gonna see the e5 and the tiger 2 up there it's that t30 that i'm worried about also i want the a100 gone in the middle because he can get side shots on us if he's smart um i'm also not liking the fact that our, our mediums are still camping in base So that was a T-30 shot. We're not going to... I'm not sure we're going to bounce these. So... I'm actually going to dip into cover here to avoid the T-30 shots. With the heat shells, we're going to be able to do much better on that E5. And to be honest, I should have act actually. I'm going to load HE, um, because HE was, will one shot that E5 because he's really low health. Jack Panzer did well. Still don't know where that T30 is. It's going to be a problem. Now the enemy team are pushing the other side, but we're still one tank up. At this stage, I can't actually leave this side until that E5's gone, um, which poses a problem against that E100 and the T30. Uh, we should win the other side, actually. An E4 against the T34. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna get. Oh no, that E5 is at much higher health than I expected. Right, we're gonna angle against where we think that T30 and E100 is. Um, right, they're in the middle, so they can't shoot us right now. Right, 
Right, uh, we're loaded, but we need the E5 to back up. Actually, if he chases... Right, oh, oh, RT got him. That's great. Right, now we can go against these two big tanks. Um, we're probably going to get nailed by RT because we've been constantly spotted. And a lot of people say the 75 is better than the 100. I tend to disagree, and oh, that was a big hit. I tend to say that you can't really compare the two because the 75 has much more speed. We've got pop the T30. No way to angle against him. But no, the E70, like we we did no damage in that. Like <laughs> we did terribly in that game, but. We attracted so much fire that it allowed our team to be able to do damage. Um, so, despite doing 550 damage and only one kill, I think we may have changed, we may have influenced the result of that battle there. But no, the E75 to me is a better sniper and it's a better kind of flanker, whereas the E100 has just bulk armor and huge hit points. I, this is something I didn't mention earlier, 2700 hit points. That is a lot. So yeah, we should win this game. Um, but yeah, that was the E100 guide. Um, I, hope, I hope like people here have learnt, angle the turret sideways, like a diagonal rather, 45 degrees. Never ever keep it facing the enemy because then they can pen it. So yeah, uh, thank you for watching. Um, if you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe. I really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I will see you when I do another one of these videos, which is probably going to be the last four. Um, if you want anything else reviewed, this I'll have to make sure it's in my garage, but. Do kind of suggest tanks. But yeah, next one's probably going to be OS4. Bye for now. Um, this is a win.